Okay guys, this is the Toyota Land Cruiser 1FZJ 105R and today I'm going to do the spark plugs on a 1FZFE petrol engine 4.5 litre. As you can see there, the, um, the vehicle itself has been used as a workhorse, it's not the best presented vehicle but we'll go through it and um, I'm doing this video because I couldn't find one else online although it is a very simple task but we all know what it's like. You always like a bit of a video just to build your confidence, make sure you're doing the right thing. So, here we go. Okay, so these are the tools that we're going to need. I've got a half inch drive ratchet extension piece, as you'll see the spark plugs down a well. A Phillips head screwdriver and a 5 8 spark plug socket. Um, you'll see in this particular socket there is a rubber grommet inside the socket. And this is very important, it will make, make your life much easier. As I put this socket over the spark plug, like so, it doesn't fall out. Because the spark plug is down a well, um, this will make your life a hell of a lot easier. Uh, it wasn't a cheap socket, it was like $20 in Australia, um, but it comes with a lifetime warranty. Sid Chrome and they'll replace it on the spot if you break it but I don't know how you get break a socket like that. So it comes out fairly easily and that's what I'm gonna use. Alright guys um, I've got a full tool kit as you can see but and none of those spark plug sockets actually fit so I had to buy a special one. Alright guys okay guys so the first thing we do on the top of the motor we'll see all the cables the sparks leading to the top of the motor and you've got a, a, a cable cover and a spark plug cover this needs to be removed it's just two screws one there one there this is the forward part I've already done it that's been removed second of all you've got so that's the top of the spark plug in there underneath that plug there is the spark plug down a well and you've got all these cable trays they're all individually numbered so there um, there's two screws, one here and one there that needs to be removed so you can remove the cable tray and access the top of your first spark plug. So once you've done that, you can start pulling some of these cables out and remove it all together. Just for easy use. Okay guys, so you can see that I've removed the spark plug to the, the cable tray. And I'm going to start one spark plug at a time and work my way back. I also need to remove this screw here and I'll pull off the air intake just to get it out of the way. For easy use, I'll also have to remove this hose. It's very simple, most cars will have a clamp there, a hose clamp of some sort. Um, but let's just do this first spark plug first. As you remove the top, um, that came out quite easily, it does it normal. Uh, that runs down to the, to the spark plug, and you can see it's got six inches, so you need the extension piece for your ratchet, as you'll see. Okay, so I've got my ratchet here. Push that, slide it down on top, make sure it's firmly on top of the spark plug. Like so, now one thing you want to do is just take note on how much pressure it takes to remove. Now, I've barely put any effort into that and she's come undone already. Now there is a torque setting for your spark plugs. Now, if you refer to a workshop manual, it will tell you. Um, I think it, it, it's quite light, it's like 15 pounds or something like that. And um, so you don't want to do them up too tight when you replace them. Okay, just bag off that way up. Got one doing one here, there's one can There we go. That's the first spark plug coming out. I can't get the focus back. She's out pretty dirty. So I'll compare it to a new one. Okay guys, so there is the two spark plugs, one old, one new. You can see there's a bit of carbonisation on the old one. 
Um, yeah, some white splotching, maybe some corrosion as well. If we can get it back into focus, I'll just get my son out of the shot. There you go. Okay, putting a new spark plug in. Wrap down the hole, nice and gently. Find the seat. You don't want to damage the plug. Got some resistance, not too tight. It's only 15 pound of torque pressure. That's gonna do the job. There we go. Okay, and replace this bad boy. Now the reason I'm doing one at a time is so I can't confuse anything. I can't mix anything up. Um, fairly simple, but you know. Murphy's Law says the simplest mistakes are the ones that are going to bring you undone. So, one at a time. On to the next one. Now, these guys haven't been removed for a while, so they can be quite difficult to pull out. There we go. Ratchet, flick her over, and back down the hole. There we go. As you can see again, very little, very little pressure. I have even gone a bit too much on that first one. Get away up. Sun me. Yeah, more than enough. And out she comes. And there you go. That's the next one. New spark ready to go. Back into number two. Nice and gentle, find the seat. Make sure you don't damage the thread or the spark or anything like that. And do them up nice and easy. Shifter, ratchet, straighten up. And just a little bit of torque, next to nothing. There we go, I don't want to go any more than that because they came out really easily. Just remove the socket, make sure the socket comes out obviously. And put this guy back in. Push and you get a bit of a clap sound. And there you go, that's one, two, down. Now here's the third guy. And it's underneath the air intake. So what I'm gonna do is undo this bad boy. Remove this guy. Somehow. I can't remember if I glued that on or not. There we go, it's coming off. Came off. And I'll just remove this all together out of the way and it'll give us access to the last back three where there's still a plate on. The cover's still on, you've got to undo those two screws and you'll have access to the last three. Right, just let me grab my screwdriver. Okay, so it came off very simply, but you will notice that. I removed all the clips off the top of the air intake, the air filter, um, so I could wiggle the whole thing, which gave me a lot more room to play with, and it just popped off like so. So there you can see the, the last four of the spark plugs that I need to be changed. So I've done that one, I've done that one, got to do number three, number four, and there'll be five and six down the back there. So let's go ahead and do number three. Pull this bugger off. It's so much fun. Okay, so I've got him out. Putting back in the new one now. Nice and easy, nice and gently. And spin him around. Too much tension, only 15 pounds. There we go. There we go. Okay, just clicking back into the cable tray, a small little cable tray here. Keep it nice and tidy. Let's go back on. Stick. little 
little clip, little clap. Okay, so for the next three, I need to undo this cover. Doesn't want to go, so what I'll do is I'll get the little ratchet out, give me a bit more torque, and um, I just want to undo this guy here and the one at the back there. So I'll put the camera down again and I'll get them undone with a small ratchet and my Phillips headpiece. Remember, if you're going to round or if you end up rounding the top of one of these screws, you put a little rubber band in top of the screw. It sometimes can give you a lot more friction and prevention or prevents more damage to the screw. So I might have to do that. Let's see how we go. Okay, so I ended up getting the rear cover off. One of the uh, bolts has been stripped with the Phillips head, um, so I didn't have much luck, but I just swapped over, as you can see it's a hex head, swapped over a 10mm socket, and there you go, she came straight off. So, going to number four. Out she comes. do guys is I'll do number four get this. okay guys just for the number six spark plug you can see this overhang here it makes it very difficult uh, to get down so I've just used two extension pieces to uh, manipulate it down and it wasn't difficult at all so all six spark plugs are done now and now I'm gonna go start putting my covers back on and also the cable trays and uh, then we'll start to give it a, a start up and see, make sure it's all, all good. I don't anticipate any problems, it should be fine. So I'll just put the, the, uh, both the trays back on and the cable tray as well, wherever we left that. On the ground here. This cable tray goes just back here. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. I'll obviously put the air intake back on and um, yeah she'll be ready to go so she's all back together covers back on both covers air intakes been tightened up back in place make sure that covers back on air filter sitting correctly as long as it runs and it runs well so that's the spark plugs done let's go start the uh, vehicle up and see if it makes see if it starts for a start and then we'll see if it uh, makes a difference at all She's running cold, running cold at a thousand RPM. Um, this vehicle does idle a little bit higher than it should, or has in the past. So once she comes up to temperature, I dare say it'll drop back down to uh, about 700. But I think it's supposed to be at 680. If I recall, I'll just run through the gears, see if it comes down. It's reversed down to about 900, or a bit less, 850. Still running cold, of course. Neutral, 1000. Drive back down to almost 800. So, yeah, I don't expect any problems. It actually, the, the engine sounds smoother just from, from listening, but um, I'll warm her up and I'll see how I go. And best of luck with your vehicle. I call this thing the road cow. It's so bloody big and heavy and a gas guzzler. Um, best of luck. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks, guys. Bye.